Welcome back everyone with your 5 p.m. update on Hurricane Ian. There's a bunch of a lot to update you on this evening, so I apologize in advance for what will be a long video, but there's just a lot of hazards to walk you through as this uh, dangerous situation unfolds. Uh, first, we'll take a look at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see a well-defined, well-defined hurricane with a clear eye. This is, this is, um, this is not what you want to see in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, but it's unfortunately unfolding uh, as predicted. As of 5 p.m., the max winds are 120 miles per hour. Movement to the north, to the north, uh, and it's located about 230 miles south of Sarasota. So you can see it's starting to close in on the Florida Peninsula. In fact, you can even see it on the radar. You're starting to pick it up on the radar to give you an indication of how close it is to the state of Florida. Just you can see a well-defined, well-defined circulation and eye wall with this particular storm. Generally going to start to make a turn more towards the north, northeast, and then approach, approach to Florida Peninsula, uh, making landfall somewhere within this red area. This is a hurricane warning area um, on Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, and then crawling, and this is an important point, crawling slowly across central Florida, and the slow forward speed is going to be really important to, uh, for the, the hazards, and we're going to start talking through them. The cone becomes increasingly less informative as we get to impacts. And I want you to focus more on the hazards and not this line. Because if you focus exclusively on this line, you're going to get a poor representation of the risk. Let's start first with the damaging wind potential. The damaging wind potential. Um, you can see this purple area is indicating greater than 90% chance. So uh, near certain that we're going to have a swath of damaging winds to cut across the center of the state as the center makes uh, landfall and moves uh, across um, just, uh, just north here of Lake Okeechobee. This is Lake Okeechobee here to give you a, a point of reference. Um, but the hazard I really want to help you understand here is um, the heavy rainfall because I'm not sure enough um, oxygen has been given to this particular threat, um, especially since I've heard some um, narrative today that Tampa has dodged a bullet or Tampa has gotten lucky. That's just simply not true. Now, while the surge threat may have gone down a little as the track shifted to the south, and now the, the storm surge threat is maximized down here with southwest Florida, say uh, Fort Myers area, a band of heavy rain, very heavy rain, looks like it's going to set up along into the north of where the center cuts across the state. This is 10 to 15 inches of rain that is predicted. If you're not familiar or contextually what that means, a typical afternoon thunderstorm here in Florida might produce an inch of rain. Uh, you Floridians are used to this, so now magnify it 15 times to get a sense of just the magnitude of that type of rainfall. And if you're familiar with this product, you know why I'm spending so much time on this particular threat. This is the excessive rainfall outlook. So basically what it's trying to show you is where there's a risk of very heavy rain developing. And you can see it's now been updated to high. Steve, if you can zoom in here, because this is an important point. This, this is now high along the I-4 corridor. So if you're along the I-4 corridor, you got to be ready for heavy rains and winds. Now, what does that mean? If you saturate the soils, soil and then put a lot of uh, wind over it, high potential for trees to be uprooted, fall over, roads to be blocked, power lines to be down. So what that means for you, if you're kind of in this area, is you got to start thinking about where you're going to be as this uh, system unfolds or approaches your community. And you're going to need to be able to stay there, possibly for a couple of days, because it's, 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 it's going to be a slow crawl moving across the state. And if we get this flooding uh, potential to unfold, you, you might not be able to move around for a couple of days. So it's really important that you pack the supplies you need, have everything you need, food, medicine, whatever you need, and be ready to be in place and stay there as this system approaches uh, late in the day on Wednesday. And I, we're, I'm not diminishing the storm surge threat. It's just I want to make sure people understand this risk that it's unfolding. Again, a, a band of heavy rain developing potentially along the I-4 corridor with a flood, traditional flood, rainwater flood, 
uh, happening here along into the north of where the track goes across the state. That is it from the National Hurricane Center. We'll continue to update you as needed. Uh, as things unfold, we'll be back. Uh, you can always go to hurricanes.gov if you want more frequent updates. And we'll see you right back here on the next update.